Hey guys, I've got a new basketball card investing strategy. You're not going to want to miss this. Stay tuned. Hey, sports card collectors, investors, my collectibles friends. I hope everyone is having a great Thursday so far. Thursday morning is when this is coming out. I'm excited to talk to you today about a new move I'm making in my basketball investing plans. Um, I'm just kind of diversifying a little bit somewhere else. I'm kind of focused in, I'm zeroed in on a certain segment of basketball cards that I'm excited to share with you. Um, first, before I get into it, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, the like button if you would like. Helps us with the YouTube, al YouTube algorithm. And we do daily content here, guys, talking about all the collectible stuff, sports cards, graded video games, graded comic books, all the fun stuff that we want to talk about. It's all here. This is our community. So thank you very much for joining and we will go ahead and jump right into it. All right, guys, lately I've been thinking about, you know, where can I find some values? I've, I've gone in on some of the, the newer players, some of the younger players we've talked about on the channel. I've gone in on Jamal Murray as a, as a guy that I really like, uh, that I'm invested in. I've got Luca, like everybody else does. But I was looking back at like, you know what, why don't I just take some common sense, look back at basketball cards as a whole. Let's just look at the whole thing and where could there be um, you know, some, some deals to be had, potential deals. And, you know, I got, I found this, but before I get into it, full disclaimer, you might not like any of these cards. I'm not telling you to buy any of these cards, buy the cards that you want. You might hate these cards or you might think they're just okay. And that's totally fine. Buy what you want and what you want to collect. This is just simply one man's opinion, one guy's opinion. I'm just another talking head on the internet and I enjoy talking about cards. I enjoy sharing with you all but by no means at all am I any sort of card expert or oracle. I don't know what's gonna happen with card prices down the road. I just love talking basketball cards. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to it. Beep. All right, you know by watching this channel, I like scarcity, I like pop reports. It's not everything, demand has to be there, so you have to have a combination of all of those things for me to have interest. And when I was growing up, the guys that were really just Manhandling the league were, of course, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, of course, with him. But you had, you know, Charles Barkley, Akeem Olajuwon, Carl Malone, Chris Mullen. There's so many Hall of Fame guys that were just doing amazing things. Clyde Drexler. Um, there's so many from the 80s. But the one thing that stands out is there are not a lot of basketball cards made in the 80s. If you look, I mean, that that iconic 8081 Tops Bird Magic rookie card is very well known. Second year Bird of Magic cards a couple years ago. I, I, you know, I was like, I really want to get that Larry card, but it was a hundred bucks PSA nine, and I'm like, why would I do that? Or eighty dollars? I'm like, it's a second year Larry Bird. You know, I mean, I don't know if I, if I could probably put my money elsewhere. And then I bought Ryan Finley rookie cards, and now the Larry Bird cards are five hundred bucks or whatever they are now. The point is, is is that there's a kind of built-in scarcity to '80s basketball cards because they didn't make that many sets. They had 8081, they had 81, 82, I guess you would call it, and that was kind of that second year Magic Johnson, second year Larry Bird where they're on they're they're on the card by themselves. The rookie card, of course, is the perforated one where they're on it with Dr. J. Um, and then after that set, there's no basketball cards up until I guess like the star sets were there in 85. Uh, but then you had 86 Fleer, which was kind of the comeback set, and of course that's the iconic set. It's got a million Hall of Famers in it, including the GOAT. Um, you know, and then you have, you know, 87, 88, 89, and that's pretty much it. So if we're looking at kind of the players from that era, and even previous eras that were kind of still in the league, Dr. J being one of them, Kareem being one of them, 80s basketball cards, I was looking at it, and they're just really underrated in my opinion. And it's so funny to me when people call them vintage. Like 80s, late 80s basketball cards are vintage because it's not, you know, 2000s, you know, whatever. It's not even 90s, it's the late 80s. Uh, most people don't wouldn't consider 80s to be vintage, or especially not late 80s. But, you know, I guess if it falls into that vintage bucket for you, then I guess I'm talking about vintage to some degree. So let me look at, and I'm going to show you kind of some pickups I've had recently. I snuck in another one that I thought was awesome. Actually, I'll just show that one first. 71 Tops Pistol Pete Maravich and a PSA 8. And I'm going to kind of explain some of this. This is a really, really nice card. Uh, second year Maravich, uh, 70 is his his rookie. Um, of course, the the long, the tall boy. But I just love this card, and uh, you know, wanted to get one. It's not an easy get. There's a lot of people that are bidding on this card and that want it, and I understand it. And I was just happy to get you know a high grade of it, uh, just to add to my collection. All right, so let's go into what I'm talking about. 
the big focus for me, and we'll, I'll just talk through it, 86 Flair Basketball is one, but it's expensive. So this is a Barkley Rookie and a PSA 8. I'm going to move my light down, see if that helps a little bit. All right, so we have a Barkley Rookie and a PSA 8. 87 Flair. So I'm looking at, you know, 86, 87, 88 is really the big target areas from where I'm looking. All right, and I'm looking for a higher grade. So like this 87, I'm not sure exactly what I paid for this 87 Fleer Bird and a nine. But again, Larry Bird doesn't have a lot of basketball cards in the 80s. If you break it down, it's just not that many. Um, and, and these sets, if you want to go buy packs of this, there's no packs to go buy that are, that are you know, affordable. There's just not. So it's like... And the raw copies, look, I mean, to get good centering on a card like this, this these cards were not centered well. These are very condition-sensitive cards. Um, so, yeah, look, this is seventh year Larry Bird or whatever, but it's in a PSA 9, and it's fairly inexpensive. I think it was maybe a couple hundred, I think this might have been $175, which I know it's not, it's not totally inexpensive, but when you consider the rarity that goes along with it. All right, Akeem Rookie, Akeem Olajuwon in a PSA 8. And I'll kind of talk through the eights and the nines when we get through this. Charles Barkley, second year, 87 Fleer, and a PSA 9. I'm sticking with those eights and nines, guys. And then here's one where heavy, heavy focus. I got a few of these 88 Fleer Jordans. This is a PSA 8. I also have a 9. Um, and I'll, again, I'll talk through it. 87 Fleer, second year Hakeem in a PSA 9. Only about $100 in a PSA 9. Maybe a little bit more now. Nothing crazy, though. 86 Fleer sticker, Hakeem Olajuwon, rookie. It is the sticker in a PSA 8. Again, fairly affordable. I believe it was at right at about $200, $210. So... Afford, they're, they're fairly affordable. And the reason why I'm saying fairly affordable is because, look, guys, there's there's people buying cards $200, dollars $1,000 $1, on current players that may or may not work out. $50,000, $100,000 on, on players that may or may not work out. Here's a bunch of guys that have worked out. I'm looking specifically at seven players in this, in this era. It's Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Akeem Olajuwon, Larry Bird, and Magic Johnson. Those are the five. And then the other two that are alternates that I'm also keeping an eye on are Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Dr. J. And those cards are really my focus. Would I love to have Clyde Drexler rookie, Joe Dumars rookies, Chris Mullen rookies from 86 Flair? I would, but I'm trying to stay very, very focused on players that, that are I, I believe have long, long-term relevance just in case I am holding the cards for a very long time. I believe that over time, those seven players are going to maintain or gain in value over time. That's my opinion. That's why I'm going I'm going in on those and I'm just looking at those eights and nines. And the reason is, if you look, if you look at the pop reports, I'm gonna use that 88 Flair All-Star Michael Jordan card as an example. I picked this one because of the picture on it. It's an iconic picture of Jordan. Outside of that 86 Fleer, you know, the 89 nine, or the 89 Fleer is also a pretty cool card. And the thing is, is once you get into kind of 89, then, then they the print runs start getting a little bit high on them. But they're still not crazy. Uh, the pop reports are still not crazy for those. I still think those are worth taking a look at. But the reason why I'm really focused on 8s and 9s is because there's people, and we know this, that they will crack an 8 or a 9 and try to resubmit it and get a 10. Or maybe they get an 8 and they're trying to get a 9. But really what they're trying to get is a 10, because if they can get a 10, the price points are extremely different. The 88 Fleer All-Star Michael Jordan is about a $175 card in a PSA 8. In a PSA 9, it's about a $400 card. In a PSA 10, it's a $5,000 card. It's a four dollars to $5,000 card in a PSA 10. So what does that mean? And I'm purely speculating. 
Is this happening? I don't know, but I think it is. I, I think that it is. And every time a case gets cracked and resubmitted and gets an eight again or gets a nine again or gets a nine this time instead of an eight or whatever, it gets counted on the pop report. And so that's why I think that when I'm looking at those pop reports, especially, I just need to kind of take it with a grain of salt that there's going to be double, triple submissions on there, and which means that these are more scarce than, than I believe. And also, too, if you go on eBay and you look up, you know, one of these in an eight or a nine, it's not like there's a thousand of them listed. There, it's not even that there's 500 of them listed. There's usually less than 50 at all times listed at all times. And a lot of times there's like 10 or 15. So, you know, it's not as if there's thousands available all the time. People, this is the type of card that people are sticking in their collection and not, and not touching for a long time. That's the type of card. Now it's not, and, and part of this is look, when I see 86 Fleer Michael Jordan rookie cards going for a quarter of a million dollars, you know, when we talk about the trickle down effects, now I do believe that those high end, those high end cards are in a separate economy. It's a separate kind of bracket. Than, than the other cards. I don't think that that automatically makes this a $10,000 card. I don't think that. But what it does do though, is for people that really like that card or really want to get into Michael Jordan, they're trying to find what cards could I get into, especially guys, gals that, that are my age that remember those times. I remember this card in the card shop when I was a kid. It was expensive then, raw, because they didn't grade cards in 1990 and 1989 when I was looking at it in a card shop. And I remember looking at that card thinking like, holy smokes, that card is incredible. So for a lot of people like, and, and me, look, this is my price point right here. You know, a couple hundred dollars, I can work with that. A quarter of a million dollars is never gonna happen. That's why I think you take the combination of the player, it's a GOAT, and all the other players that I mentioned are Hall of Fame players and, and just, you know, have relevance. Not just Hall of Famers, but they also have added relevance to them. You know, Charles Barkley still on TV. Akeem Olajuwon's got championship. Shaq, you know, a lot of those guys have said like, no one wanted any bit, anything to do with Hakeem Olajuwon. He was the best. And I remember watching him play. He was automatic. You know, so there are certain players. And then, of course, you know, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. Those are guys that are never going to go away. Those are guys that, you know, their legacy is set. And they have importance. In 50 years, people will know who they are. They will remember who they are. So, and that's why I'm kind of making this change. Um, I'm, I'm just going to focus heavily on it for a while. Um, and we'll see what happens. And it's for me, it's kind of like in the short in the short term, I think it can be good. But really, in the long run, I I have no concerns that I'm going to lose money on an 88 Fleer Jordan in a pretty high grade. I just don't. And maybe I will. Maybe I will. Maybe I will go to zero. Who knows? You know, you never know with it, with any of this stuff. But I just I wanted to share this with you guys because I'm excited about it. If you can't tell. Um, and, and I wanted to just kind of keep you in the loop on what I'm doing these days. Again, thank you very much for joining, for subscribing. I appreciate you guys, and I hope that you have a wonderful Thursday as we head closer to the weekend where hopefully my Saints knock off the Bucks. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.